What is up guys, welcome back to the channel and today we are looking at a wildly popular running shoe, the latest iteration of the Brooks Ghost, the 14. Now I have been running in the Brooks Ghost 13 for a little less than a year. They released the 14 about two months earlier this year than they did the 13 last year. Still, I've got 480 miles in the Brooks Ghost 13, so I'm gonna be giving you a rundown on Brooks's latest Ghost and telling you how it compares to the 13. And they've made some changes. Not big changes, but big enough that you're gonna to wanna to pick up the 14. So I'm gonna take this out for its first run. This is still brand new, no wear on this shoe yet. I'm gonna take it out for its first run. When I come back, I'm gonna give you my first impressions. Keep in mind, this is not my full review. My full review always comes after I run at least 100 miles in a shoe. Let's go test it out. A great first run in the Brooks Ghost 14, knocked out 18.2 miles, which is about 29.3 kilometers, at an average pace of 8.42 a mile, which is 5.25 a kilometer. As you can see, again, soaked, a very hot summer morning run. And to be honest, I didn't feel like doing this run this morning, but I did meet up with two buddies, Julian and Tyler, and they kind of they helped me through, gave me that motivation I needed to knock out these miles. So let me get inside, let me get cleaned up, and then I'm gonna give you guys the specs and tell you how these Ghost 14s felt on their first run. Well, there is definitely a reason that the Ghost are Brooks' most well-selling running shoe. And it's really because they just work. I should know, I absolutely love the Ghost 13 and I ran in them all year. So first I should tell you how much they cost. How much are they gonna run you if you wanted to pick up a pair of these? They are $130 in the US, they're 120 pounds in the UK. As always, I will link to these shoes in the show notes below using my affiliate link at Jackrabbit. You don't pay any more. If you buy these shoes using my link, it just helps support the channel. So thanks for that. I think partially what makes the Brooks Ghost line so popular is that Brooks makes them available in several different widths. So though I am testing these, I think they're medium or D. The Ghosts are also available in narrow, medium, wide, and extra wide. So no matter what your foot size, no matter what your foot shape, the Ghosts are gonna fit you. Brooks claims that in a men's size nine, the Brooks Ghost weighs in at 9.9 .9 ounces or 255 grams. Now this hasn't changed from last year. The Brooks Ghost 13 weighed exactly the same, which is a little surprising because this year Brooks has made some changes to the upper to make it a little more lightweight and they've changed the midsole, but we'll get to that. Of course guys, you know the drill in my size, I don't wear a men's size nine, men's size 13 in the US, 12 in the UK. And my size tips the scale at 11.9 .9 ounces or 337 grams. But wait, there's more. After my run this morning, after two and a half hours or something like that of running in the warm temperatures, sweating profusely that whole time, the ghost put on some weight. The second I walked in the door, I walked over to the scale, which I'd already set up. The ghost 14, after my run, now weigh 14.6 ounces or 413 grams. That's an increase of 22% of weight during one run. Now I've said it before, I'll say it again. This is totally sensationalism. Your results are going to differ from mine. These results are gonna be different depending on the temperature that you're running in, depending on the effort that you're putting in. All shoes put on weight. When I run in them, summertime in Florida, they all put on weight. Brooke has kept the stack height and the drop the same from last year with the Brooks Ghost 13. We have 24 millimeters in the heel, we have 12 millimeters in the forefoot, making it a 12 millimeter drop. This is on the high end of droppiness. But I also think that that's what makes this shoe so popular. That 12 millimeter drop is incredibly comfortable to run in, especially if you tend to hit towards the mid to heel. Let's just start at the top and we're gonna work our way down. The upper is an engineered mesh, it's a dual layer mesh. So when you put your hand in, you can feel these two layers. The inside layer is kind of like a, a neoprene. The outside is like a traditional mesh. Brooks calls this a 3D fit print upper. It's 3D printed and it just hugs your foot. So any size foot is going to fit in here and the upper is kind of going to adapt to it. And while that does sound like some marketing mumbo jumbo, it actually works. It's the reason that I ran in my Ghost 13s for so long because the upper is so comfortable. The step in comfort, that's what we're talking about, is absolutely incredible. It does feel like you're putting on a pair of slippers, a pair of slippers that are going to be resilient and a pair of slippers that you can run in for miles and miles and miles. And that's partially to do with this 3D print upper, but it's also to do with the cushioning. Not the cushioning in the midsole, 
The cushioning around the heel collar. The heel collar is incredibly cushioned. It's very thick. The tongue is, it's on the thicker end of the spectrum, but that's exactly what you would expect with a shoe like this, a daily trainer, a shoe that's built for comfort. The tongue is not gusseted, but I didn't notice any drawback from not having a gusseted tongue. I know I've said in the past that why don't all shoe companies make gusseted tongues? And maybe that's just me running my mouth because this shoe doesn't have a gusseted tongue and yet it felt really good. I thought maybe that the tongue would start to slide, not so. The tongue was extremely comfortable, held in place by these linguini laces. Now that's another change that Brooks has made. Last year, they were kind of sausage laces, you know, those kind of round oval shaped laces. Laces. They've replaced those with these flat laces and that is supposed to contribute to the lockdown across your midfoot. Yes, the lockdown was very good, but it was also good on the Ghost 13 with the sausage laces. Back to the heel collar, very cushioned. Again, step in comfort. You put your foot in here, it's like your foot is going home. This heel collar just wraps around your heel, reassuring your heel that you're safe here. You're going to be comfortable. The heel counter is absolutely beautiful. It's very rigid. Again, it works in concert with the heel collar to just cradle your foot. If you can't already tell, I'm rather enamored with this shoe because of how it makes my foot feel. It's very comfortable and the reason I held on to the Ghost 13s all last year was because they were my go-to shoe when I just didn't feel like going for a run. I knew that if I put on the Ghost, they're going to caress my foot, they're going to make me feel good. I wouldn't have to worry about any foot pain if I put on the Ghost and I'm happy to report that the 14 continues that tradition of extreme comfort. Now this is a cushion shoe. This is a, a highly cushioned shoe, but it's not a max cushion shoe. If you wanted something with more cushioning, you'd be going for the Brooks Glycerin. If you wanted something with a little less, you'd be going to the Brooks Launch. So what does that make the Brooks Ghost? Mix of the Goldilocks, the sweet spot right in the middle. The Brooks Ghost is that kind of shoe that if you wanted one shoe to do everything, you could do it. I know some of us runners, we like to, we like all the, the latest technology. We want the carbon fiber plates or the nylon plates to help pick up the pace and that's fine. There's a place for that. But there is also a place for a shoe that takes care of you through the miles. So while I would recommend this shoe for anyone to add it to their rotation, for their longer runs, for their easier runs, if you're a newer runner and you don't know anything about shoes and you're just like, I just need a pair of shoes. I, I don't know much about them. What should I get? I would feel safe recommending the Ghost because of how they feel, because of how they fit, because of the resilience. Let's move on to the midsole because the midsole is where Brooks has made some changes. Brooks now uses their DNA loft midsole throughout the entire midsole. So last year, the Brooks Ghost 13 had the midsole kind of split down the middle. On the lateral side, there was the Biomogo foam and on the medial side, there was the DNA loft. Brooks has scrapped the Biomogo foam in the Ghost 14. They've got a full DNA loft and not just that, it's the DNA Loft V3, which I assume is considerably better than the DNA Loft V2. The outsole is built for logging the miles. You can see here, we've got full length rubber. The rubber is a good thickness. I'll have to zoom in so you can see this, but there's a lot of rubber on this shoe. Now, I'll be honest with you guys. I am only retiring the Brooks Ghost 13 because the 14 has come out. I told you put 470, 480 miles in the Brooks Ghost 13, and they would be good for several more hundred miles. But I've got to test these new ones for you. So if you wanted a shoe to last, if you wanted a shoe that you don't have to replace every single year, this would be a pretty good option for you. So as far as feeling when running, the best thing I can say about this shoe is that I forgot I was wearing it. Now I know a lot of you are gonna say, Matt, that's a pretty heavy shoe, especially in your size. The Ghost 14 feels a lot lighter on foot than one might expect. And although this was my first run in the shoe today, and when I'm doing in my first run, I am just, I'm trying to be conscious of it the entire time. You know how it goes, you get lost in conversation. I stopped thinking about my shoes and I was paying attention to the people I was running with. And that is good, that's good, both for social skills and for the shoe. The shoe made me forget about it. There was nothing overtly weird kind of sticking out in my mind. The shoe was incredibly comfortable. Now, let's get back to that 12 millimeter drop because I said that perhaps it would favor heel strikers a little more. I did find that when I was running, the transition was great from heel to toe. It rolled through the gate cycle well. Yeah, just like this. But I did notice towards the end, you know, when I had logged a couple couple miles and I was getting a bit more tired, I did notice that I was scuffing my heel a little more than I usually would. Now, maybe that is because I was tired and I had run 18 miles. Maybe it was to do with the drop being rather large, on the larger side than what I'm used to. It wasn't really a negative, it was more like I wasn't running with my friends at that time, so I was paying more attention to the shoe. And I do have to tell you that after 18 miles, I was 
pretty tired. That's to be expected. I was very thirsty at the end of the run, but most importantly, my feet felt great. If the shoes were the only variable, I could have run forever. Okay, my friends, stay tuned to the channel. Subscribe if you're not already. And if you like running shoes, why don't you give this video a thumbs up? It just helps YouTube to push this video out to people that may find it useful. I will be giving you my full review of the Brooks Ghost 14 after I run a minimum of 100 miles. Okay, everyone, be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.